Hello everyone. Thanks for tuning back in. Sorry we didn't get these cars all finished up in our last segment. Working on five of them took a lot longer than I expected. And I don't like to do anything in a hurry. So I had to break that video up into three segments just to show you this project. I'll try to plan it a little better next time. Maybe we'll work on three cars instead of five or something. But we're just down to the final detail work, which really doesn't sound like much and shouldn't take that long. But on five cars and the way I work, who knows how long it's going to take. We're going to go ahead. Our next step is go back to some washes. We only did a black wash in our previous video. Now we're going to do another wash. And I think we're going to do the chestnut color this time. Watered down for our next wash. Right off the bat I see some areas on this yellow car that could use some more rust, especially in crevices. I'm not going to get the whole entire car wet like we did the other day. Just the areas where I think it needs to have some more rust. On top of the wheel wells any crevices where water would sit and take a long time to dry or be in the shade. I think this green one could use another wash in the chestnut in some areas as well, especially bottom of the running board, same thing, around the edges and crevices. The more time you spend on these, or any project, the better it's going to look. And I love the patina we ended up with on this green car, but I think it needs some rust. A little bit more rust here and there. Looks like our running boards are pretty well covered on this one. I think the running boards are finished, but the body could use a little more rust here and there. I think we might do the whole body with a wash of this chestnut. And the heavier you put it on, you don't want to put it on so heavy like we did with the black wash that you're getting your table wet. But you do want to have some puddles on it because as those puddles dry, it's going to leave a nice effect. This one here, if anything, I think we'll switch to burnt umber and put some more dots on this one. You can keep layering these washes up and you get a little different effect each time until you're satisfied with the look that you have. You can just keep doing that. Okay. I think the one that we put paper over the whole car has a really cool look. We just want to put some more speckles of the burnt umber on here. I think it would look better. Yeah, we, we ran out of time. The video ran so long, we didn't even get to work on the bottom of any of these cars to practice our patina. But I think once you've watched the video and tried this a few times, you're going to get the hang of it. 
and you can practice on the bottom like we mentioned. You can just use the burnt umber speckles over top of the chestnut and it's going to look a lot like rust with just those two colors. Especially as that dries. Alright, we got to get rid of this dark black in our seats. For that, I think we're going to put a gray wash over the black. And for that, I'm using just regular house paint that's thinned down. Just like any other color, if, you know, you can control how much pigment, pigment you have. If you're not getting enough gray, just add some more gray to your water. But I think graying up these seats may help. Got to get them looking weathered. Really don't want it to look like it has black fabric on any of the seats because the fabric would probably be gone at this point. If you get some on the body, don't worry about it. A little bit of gray on the body is not going to hurt anything. Just might make it look dirty. If you want, you could put a gray wash over the whole car and get a whole other different look. Alright, that should dull down this dark interior. You'll probably have to let that dry for a little bit now that we've gotten things wet. As I'm looking it over, I think the this one here could use some more burnt umber as well. Darken some of these areas up a little more. Remember to do some test dabs so you're just getting specks from your brush. If you don't like how this is turning out and you're doing this on a 164 scale car and you don't think it's working right or not looking like what we're doing, you can always try it on a slightly larger car. You may get the hang of this better because you really have to like scale everything down. That's why we're just using little tiny specks. You'd be more forgiving on a larger vehicle. If you put too much on, that is. This is probably a good time. Some stuff is still drying, but I can handle the cars a little bit. This would probably be a good time to take our flat black and paint some of the headlights out. Like they're missing. For that, we'll need a small artist brush and our straight flat black. And we want to go in and Paint the headlight area black so it looks like the light's missing. If you get too much on the frame or something, just take your finger and wipe it off. I think we'll make this one look like both headlights are missing. gives it a better look already.
This one has two little lights in the grill. Might as well make those blacked out too. And there's a hole for a crank. Paint that black as well. These little details like this really make a big difference, I think. You'll have to come back with an artist brush and do a lot of this detail work. This one's not really got any headlights, but it does have a grill. We could do a black wash on the grill on this one and have it stand out a little more. I think that will be a good spot for a black wash. Use the same brush. Put it in our black wash. That should make the grill stand out a little more. Might have to put a couple of black washes on the grill. There seems to be a pretty good gap between the hood and the cab. That will probably be another good spot for a black wash. As I'm looking this one over, I mentioned earlier in the video that the fenders were brown. Probably wouldn't take much to make them look rusty. They still just look brown, so I'm going to go ahead and paint them out with our chestnut color and just do a whole new patina on these fenders. I probably shouldn't have skipped those. I was just trying to save some time. So I'm going to go back and paint those now. Alright, now for one of our last processes here. I have to take a small artist brush. If you watched me do this in the Cadillac video, you'll see the same technique. We go in and find our creases in the paper and try to trace them with this color and make these ruffles in the metal stand out. I try to picture in my mind if the car was damaged or hit somewhere where the paint might have popped off, it would probably corrode down to the bare metal. And those are the areas I want to try to darken up where we have those creases in the paper. If you put too much on, just lighten it up with your finger and blend it in. This is one of those little details where I have to almost hold the car up to my face. Also, on this one, I try to help some of these body lines show up a little more. I'll put some in the body lines and then wipe it back off with my finger if it's too, too heavy. And where there's a heavy body line like this, water would probably sit on the car and cause it to rest right on top of that line. So that's what I'm trying to pick up with the artist brush. Somebody said earlier I should have made these into rat rods. It's still not too late and some of these finishes would probably make great rat rods. Maybe that should be another video. When we get done building the diorama, maybe we'll take some of the cars out for another project and turn them into some hot rods or something. I like that one. I think that one's done. This one's got some damage that we put on it that we can highlight with the artist brush.
Sometimes you just got to use your finger to push the paint into the areas where you want it to be on this part of the process. Gently, I took some of the paper off that time. If you were going to do this on a rat rod and you plan on touching it a lot, I would recommend spraying it with a some kind of a clear finish on top, like a satin finish, no more than a satin or low luster, and would help seal this paint down so it's not coming off on your fingers and give it a nice professional look as well. I think that's about ready. This one has a lot of little crumples in the paper. We can add some more lines to. Especially down here. I hope you can see well, I'm just trying to work that chestnut color into these ripples in the paper. Also, if you guys want to get a closer look at these cars, once they're finished, I'm going to post them on my Instagram account. I might do a little bit of detail work that's not in these videos, just so they look proper. A lot of times you think you're finished and you take pictures with the digital camera and you see all kinds of stuff that you missed. I, I recommend not saying a project is finished until you've photographed it and see the things that you could have missed. That's, that seems to be the case for me. Alright, I think this one will put a little bit of burnt umber on top of some of those spots. You don't always have to let the burnt umber and chestnut colors dry all the way when you start blending them together as long as you're just gently dabbing it with speckles. They'll just kind of mix together and give you another nice look in your rust actually. They're really starting to look like something you would see in a junkyard. Alright, I think I've wasted enough of your time with all of this. Um, in order to do these fine, fine details, I'm just going to have to hold them close up to my face. And if you guys want to see the final result, which isn't going to look too different, I might take the wheels off. Uh, I'll post them on Instagram. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a great day. Please subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button. Alright, I set up a temporary junkyard scene at my Bates Motel diorama that I'm not finished building. Just so you can get an idea of how these cars can be used. If you have some old junky cars and you don't want to put them in your collection, but you don't want to throw them away. You can always turn them into something like this. And, and these are all going to be in our next diorama that we build. I'm going to build a junkyard diorama soon. So we're getting all the pieces together now as we do these cars and these videos. So when we get the diorama built, all we have to do is put our pieces in place and it'll look like a junkyard. I still got to do the landscaping on this Bates Motel build. Um, I wish I would have recorded this one, 
but I wasn't making videos then. But I could always build another one. I saved my templates. So, just to give you an idea of how cool these could probably look in a junkyard. Here's how they look in this temporary setup. And all of these techniques that we use to put these patinas on are the same techniques that I use on the Bates Motel, the roof, the siding, even painting the gravel, weathering the house. All of the same techniques we used on the cars was used in this diorama here. So thanks for following along. Hope you guys learned something. Uh, if you try these try this project at home, please send me some pictures of what you come up with. I would love to put them on Instagram. Uh, thanks for liking and hope you guys subscribe.